Hey folks, welcome back to their Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark. And I'm Randy. Today we're taking a look at Laruna Age of Kingdoms. Laruna Age of Kingdoms is brought to you by Odom Publishing. It plays two to six players, ages 15 and up, and each game takes two to four hours to play. Great, well let's see whose nation can curry the favor of the gods. Age of Kingdoms is a game about the struggle for greatness in a fantasy world. By adopting the role of a powerful magic user, players compete with one another to lead their kingdoms to economic, military, and spiritual achievements, earning the favor of the gods along the way. The player with the most favor at the end of the game is declared the winner. If there is a tie, the gods smile upon no kingdom, and all of the players lose. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do on the setup is pull out this huge, big, beautiful map that shows all the kingdoms. And this game, Age of Kingdoms, is played in a number of seasons, which is represented at the top of the board. Now, the short game is 10 seasons, the middle game is 15, mm -hmm. and the long game is 20. Yeah. And then everybody gets to pick their own race. And you get these beautiful player mats with worker placement. That's right. So once the players have chosen their races, each player gets the appropriate player mat. They get seven worker meeples, which will be used to place uh, on the mat to get resources. Mm -hmm. They will also get various cards and stand-ups uh, or miniatures representing the, the recruitable units that each race has. Now, each right. race can hire or recruit, recruit. different different types yeah. of creatures or really, soldiers. That's yeah. one of the really neat things. It, it is. Yeah. And, and as you expand other territories, you'll find you get to do get to recruit different types of, of units as Absolutely. well. But we'll talk about that more in a bit. So not only do you get the player mat and the workers, you also get trackers for the stability of your kingdom and the population of your kingdom. Each player mat features six columns allowing players to accumulate gold, food, mana, defense garrisons, command tokens, and ultimately the favor of the gods. Mm. Now this is a worker placement game, and so it's important where you put your meeples. Very important. But if players want to, they can invest and upgrade each of these squares right. up to twice. And so each player is given a set of these small tiles they can put on top of the squares to indicate the upgrades and accumulate more resources. Each kingdom is given its own set of unique agenda cards, and then each kingdom or player will pick a leader to go with their kingdom. Now the cool thing about these leaders is that once you pick a leader, you get a set of spell cards specific to that leader, mm -hmm. and then each leader has a set of virtue cards that you can look through and pick one and keep it secret for the rest of the game until possibly you use it and reveal what ultimate power you might have. Mm -hmm. You will also prepare the territory cards, the territory agenda, and territory unit cards. And you will prepare the island cards, the dimension cards, and the world event cards as well. Before beginning the game, each player must do two more things. First, mm -hmm. they must position three of their worker meeples yes. on their player mat. Now, the top row represents the default income that you'll get every turn. Um, the gold, food, and mana are things that will accumulate throughout the game. Yeah, resources. They're resources, yeah. yes. So each turn you will get that. Now, the uh, fourth and fifth columns represent defense garrisons mm -hmm. and command tokens. These will not accumulate each turn, but they represent a level. Right. So if, if you uh, see two there, you won't, uh, you won't get those every turn, but you will say you, uh, if you've lost them in the previous turns, you get to get um, those tokens back. back. So you have two to distribute mm -hmm. uh, during, during the turn. Uh, lastly, the sixth column represents the favor of the gods. Which is really ultimately what you're after. It, it is indeed, but unfortunately that uh, top row indicates only what you get at the beginning of the game. That's right. not a recurring thing. Right. If you want to get something on a per turn basis, <laughs> you'll have to position your worker someplace further down. Yeah, and down that's key because based on the stability of your kingdom will determine where you can place those workers. Right, so you are limited by the stability and the stability tracker uh, shows here on the player mat. It goes from unstable in the red mm -hmm. up to stable in blue to very stable in green. And the more stable your kingdom is, the further down each column you can position your workers right. with uh, the lower rows having much more powerful squares. Exactly. So you want to keep your, your stability further up and uh, the players will try to do that throughout the game. They'll move their stability and it'll if, be, if they'll move up and down. It, it will, it yeah. will depending on what you do. So in any case, the first thing each player must do is position their workers mm -hmm. uh, within 
within the limits. Everybody starts with a stable kingdom, so you can position it either in, them in either the second right. or third rows yep. to augment what you're getting by default in the top row. The last thing you need to do is each player must draw uh, three agenda cards and two spell cards, although Correct. they might be able to draw more depending upon the leader that they have. Some leaders right. have special abilities. Yeah, like holding on to extra spells. And exactly, so forth, exactly. So. so once you have that, you'll have your starting hand, you'll have your workers in place, and you'll be ready to uh, get some income in an upcoming phase. All right. As Mark said, Age of Kingdoms is played in a series of seasons. Each season has four phases. The world event phase, the kingdom phase, the map phase, and the trade phase. During the world event phase, Every five, fifth season, right. Every fifth season, a world event card is played. Right. Okay. Now this can be a boon in, yeah. in the sense that you might yeah. get extra get food, extra food, or it could be the opposite, like right. a drought and, right. and less food. Right. Okay. But during the first four seasons, there are no world events in right. play, and so you get a chance to get your feet underneath you. But beginning which on the is much needed. It is very needed. <laughs> then in the fifth season, a world event card will be played and mm -hmm. will stay in effect. Through the next five seasons until in the in the tenth season, right. a new right. world event card is played and, and replaces, replaces the, yeah. the old one. And that happens again in season fifteen and twenty. Mm -hmm. Now, whether or not a world event card is played, there are other things you can do during this phase, such as declare war. war. Yes. Now it's in, it's important to determine when you're going to declare war because mm -hmm. wars can only last for a series of five, five seasons. seasons. Right. <laughs> and if you, if you don't succeed during that time, you're then out they, of luck. They, yeah, the, and the defender gets fortune, yes. you know, or the favor, right? Favor. The favor of the gods. And if, that's what you're after. That's ultimately, ultimately what you're yeah. after, after and how you're going to win the game. Yep. So it's very key to mm -hmm. determine when you actually declare war. Exactly. Just like in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is the kingdom phase. And the first action in the kingdom phase is income and stability. So on your player mat, across the top, you're going to get those resources, which are super critical mm -hmm. throughout the game. And you may, to start off, want to just get more of those resources. So things like gold and mana and food are mm -hmm. some of the primary things to hang on to initially. Mm -hmm. So those are very, very important. And then comes stability. And based on what world cards might be in play, might affect your stability. And if you have patrols or religion or other things on your player board, that may also affect your stability. So these are things mm -hmm. that have to be adjusted before you move on. So after you've enjoyed getting all the loot during the, the income goodies. phase, yes, unfortunately it's followed by having to pay upkeep. Yeah. And there are uh, various... a lot to pay th There's sometimes. quite a bit to pay sometimes. There are a variety of targets for your upkeep. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you have to deal with all the forced upkeep. And this is upkeep that's required by any spells that are in play, yes. any agenda cards, or if your kingdom was sacked in a previous turn. Yeah, which is unfortunate. It, it really is. If your kingdom was sacked, you're not out of the game, but the turn immediately after, you have to pay half of your resources rounded down rough. to that uh, kingdom who defeated <laughs> just you. Just the one time. Just that one time. Next, you have to pay upkeep to your or for your population. Mm -hmm. So if you yeah. can't feed your population, you lose, you lose population. population. So it's important you keep people food around. Are hungry. They are. So be prepared <laughs> to feed your people. Next, you have to also feed any soldiers or units you've recruited. Yeah. So if you can't feed them, they go revolt. They them. go into revolt phase, and that impacts your stability as yes, well. Yes, it does. Next, this is not something you pay, but if, during the upkeep phase, you have to remove duration counters mm -hmm. for any spells that weren't right. immediate. They right. weren't instants. If, if for spells that uh, endure, Last through, turns. Yeah, yeah. you have to remove them. So eventually, mm -hmm. once you've removed all the duration markers, it goes away. Right. And so lastly, if you are in war at war with another kingdom, both mm -hmm. uh, you and the other kingdom, during this phase, will have to uh, reduce your stability by, by one. one. Yep. And that's the extent of your upkeep phase. Now, during the kingdom actions part of the kingdom phase, mm -hmm. there's a lot you can do. So right. we're going to try to cover that all here. Yeah. Uh, first of all, you get the opportunity to play an agenda card. You can play one agenda card per turn right. uh, during this phase. Now, if you look at your hand and you don't like what you've got, you can pay one gold and uh, draw a card, mm -hmm. an agenda card, uh, but you have to immediately discard down to your maximum number of agenda right. cards before you play. And in fact, if you draw one and, and still don't like what you've got, you don't have to play an agenda card during right. the turn. So you have the option of, of drawing, playing, or doing both. Mm -hmm. and the same thing applies to spell cards. If yeah. you look at your spell cards and say, I don't like what I've got, you can pay a gold, draw a spell card, discard down to your max, and then play a spell card if you like, right. either or or both. Right. 
And it's important to note that all of these actions can be done in any order. Exactly. That's a good thing, so it, a good thing to point out. You yeah. can do this however you want to do it on your turn. Right. So the other thing you do is pay gold to upgrade the worker spots on your player mat. Right. And this is really cool because if you have a worker in that spot already, you can pay gold to upgrade it for next time if you're going to leave that worker there. Now, mm -hmm. if you do want to move that worker, that's another action. Mm -hmm. And that reduces stability in your kingdom because you're shifting people around, right. and it may not be they may they may not be happy. About right, just that, like when right? you get moved around in your job. Exactly, you pay one stability to move any or all of your workers. Exactly, yeah. correct. And then you can also pay food to increase your population. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen right away. No, there's right. like several sequences you have to move it up there three are. times before you actually get that additional worker. But it's worker. pretty slick. And yeah, it is. How that works. Yeah, but yeah. then of course you have to worry about upkeep yeah. the next go around. The more people you got, the more, the more food, food you gotta pay takes. for them. Yeah. So in addition to increasing population, this is the phase during which you can recruit units. Mm -hmm. So you have these cool unit cards, yeah. and they have uh, beautiful see, artwork. They're beautiful artwork, too. and you see on them a variety of things, including uh, how far they can move, um, what their attack strength is, defense, uh, their damage, and their health. Yeah. Uh, but up in the upper left, you see their recruiting cost. Right. And you pay that, and that can yeah. be in the form and of... it's gold, of, or sometimes it's mana. And, and food, yeah. Food, so, right. so all those things are required, but during this phase, you can recruit them. You can only recruit as many units as you have command tokens. And those Correct. are these things right here. And again, uh, these are in the fifth column of your player mat. And again, that's the level. So if, if your level is mm -hmm. three command tokens, you can have a maximum of three units right. out there at any point in time. Uh, so you can, you can do that. You can also, um, at this point in time, you have these garrison tokens. This mm -hmm. is the fourth column. Uh, and the garrison tokens represent maybe your armor of armor, your territories. Yeah, yeah. so ba basically yeah. when your territories are being attacked, and this applies to your yep. own kingdom or in the territories you've taken control of, uh, you can take your garrison tokens yep. and distribute them, and they represent um, damage soak, if you yeah, will. It's yeah, it's really shields. For yeah, your, basically, yeah. but they're not but for units. They're, no, they're for the territories. For the territories. So the garrison before... Uh, Attacking units do damage mm -hmm. to your kingdom or your territories. Uh, they have Get to first. The they have to break down these these yeah, garrisons. Which is so, pretty thematic. It is yeah, very much really, so. Really is. Cool. But you, you, this is the turn part of the the turn when you get to redistribute those. So yes. if you have four of these, you say, and I've got two, your kingdom and a territory. You can say, I can put them all four at home territory, mm -hmm. or up two and two, or three and right. one, whatever. So you can do that here as well. And lastly, what you can do during the Kingdom Actions part of this phase is establish trade agreements mm. and military alliances. Military alliances are useful if you're going to take sides in a war. So let's yeah. say me and Mark um, have are at war, and you uh, choose to take sides with one of us. There, there is me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there are there is favor to be had by right. uh, allying yourself with the winning side. So Correct. if the defender is able to hold out more and than again, five turns, it's all about favor. It's all about favor. So there are reasons to to form these military mm -hmm. alliances so you get some favor uh, potentially at someone else's cost. Exactly. <laughs> but and also trade agreements are are can be formed during this phase. Trade agreements are done with another player. And what you do during um, a later later phase mm -hmm. is you have the opportunity to exchange one resource yeah. with each other. They can't be the same resource. Right. You can't exchange mana for mana, but but uh, there is favor to be had if you've exchanged resources uh, you're five times. Nice. Yes, you're you're being nice. You're, you're getting along, <laughs> and so the gods like that, yep. or at least some of the gods do. Yeah. Maybe Ares Indeed. doesn't. But <laughs> <laughs> in any case, if you fulfill the trade agreement, you get favor at the at the completion of the agreement. So both military alliances and trade agreements can be done during this phase. Lastly, the last part of the Kingdom Actions section of the kingdoms, uh, Kingdom phase is that your treasury is big, yes. but it has limitations. It does, and that's the sad part, right? It is. So Now, there are ways to increase it, but by default, your treasury can hold a maximum of five gold, five food, and five mana. Yeah. So if you have more than that, at the very end of the, this section, the Kingdom Action section, right. you must discard any excess resources, or those, those types of resources. Painful. Yes, it is. <laughs> so keep that in mind when you're spending. Yeah. Sometimes it's better to spend it than to lose it. It really is, yeah. absolutely. All right, next up is the map phase. And this is where the action happens, right? Right. So this is one of my favorite parts of the game, really. Mm -hmm. So you, you can move and attack Units. So basically, when you move an attack, you have to do in that order because if you attack first, then you can't move. Right. Right. So right. each each unit that that for which you have a command token can be used to attack either another unit 
right? Okay. Or a neutral territory. Correct. Or a an occupied kingdom or territory if you're at war with them. Yep. And these attack actions can vary. Like if you have some spells in place, potentially you could use some of those spells. Right. Those can trigger during those this time. Those can trigger during this time, which are pretty slick. Some of those spells are really powerful mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And potentially you might have a really powerful virtue that you might want to use right. during the attack that might come as into well. play. So those are some things to keep in mind. Now, the way you attack, your units attack, depend upon what you're attacking. Yes. So if your unit is attacking another unit, these dice actually come into play. Uh, the attacker gets both this attack die as well as the, the star die. And mm -hmm. the defender gets this other defense die. That's right. So what will happen is when the attacker rolls this, um, two things happen. First of all, the um, this number is added to his attack value shown in this card above the little, um, we'll say what color is that, maroon knife yes, silhouette knife, there. Knife symbol, for sure. And uh, this, the defense die is added to the defender's yep. uh, blue shield here. Um, and that determines if, if the attack value is greater than the def defense value, then uh, the attacker yeah, wins and, yeah. and vice versa. Right. But also this star die it dictates whether additional powers of that yeah. unit come into play. Which so, some of those powers are really mm -hmm. interesting and, and powerful. They are, the they are. But they might not come into play if the attack doesn't succeed. But That's if the correct. attack succeeds, um, it's not the attack value that gets applied. Uh, it's the damage value that yes. gets applied. The damage value is shown for the attacker uh, on the green circle, above mm -hmm. the green circle. And this is applied, damage is applied to the defender right. and, if, and is shown with damage tokens. And once damage tokens accrue such that they equal the health shown above the, uh, we'll say, orange cross symbol on right. the defender's, uh, uh, defender's uh, card, uh, that that unit is taken out. Right. So, um, again, you roll the die, you add them to the appropriate values on each player's card. If the attack is successful, then you apply damage and you evaluate whether that unit is dead. That's only for unit-to-unit -unit combat. That's right. Um, if the unit is attacking a neutral space, and there are, the, there are a number of yeah. gray silhouette all, or gray... Yeah. and they're uh, very... They're outlined. They're, they have a solid outline yes, as well have, as yes. versus the dotted outline. Exactly. Now, so. the reason you might... You say, well, why do I want to attack a place where there's nothing there? If you attack a location, a neutral location, and you apply three damage tokens to right. it... Uh, you get control. control. And this is awesome. Yeah. Because not only that, you get agenda cards. Right. You get agenda cards for that location. And you get new possible recruits. Right. right. So we uncovered one the other night where we attacked this or one of us attacked it and took it over. And all of a sudden you've got a, a unit, a, a yeah. werewolf unit. Well, card. It's like, whoa, really what's that? Cool. Yeah. It really steps up your ability to wreak havoc so you know right right so you might say well my units were good for my kingdom and yeah. now they're great over here in fact as you play the game you might become more familiar with what you can recruit from exactly. where and you might say i rather than trying to attack another kingdom the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go get the werewolves from this yeah, location and absolutely. then we'll attack so that's what happens if you attack a neutral location. Mm -hmm. Now, if you already have some damage on that location, another person can't come over and right. start attacking that neutral location. Also, you can't even attack a location if there's another player's unit on that location. Right. So you can only be doing damage there if you're the only person there and if there are no other player's damage tokens on yeah. that location. It's a really interesting way to get new and unique powers into your hand. Right, right. It's so really it adds, fantastic. It adds replayability mm -hmm. of the game because you've got quite a few neutral locations yeah. that you, you could ex explore there. Uh, the last thing you can attack with your units, I shouldn't say the last, but the last thing right. amongst the obvious things, are other players' kingdoms. Mm -hmm. And once you've done five damage to that kingdom, and keep in mind that garrison tokens are in play right. um, for any uh, kingdom or territory controlled by a player. So once you've done damage, after getting past the garrisons, if you've done five, then you've officially sacked that kingdom. That's we right. talked about sacked earlier. Yeah. Now, beyond attacking units and attacking um, neutral territories and other kingdoms, there are additional things you can do, and I think this is something that I really enjoy. If your unit moves to one of the gate locations, mm. which are shown by the big black circles with the temples in the middle of them, or the port locations, yeah. uh, you have the option to explore things that aren't shown on the map. Which is really neat, actually. It is. Again, super thematic. It, it is, very much so. So you can pay, once, you're, once you've moved on to a gold or a port location, mm -hmm. you can pay one gold 
to uh, explore an island, and you can turn over an island card, and there are thing, and then you immediately move your right. your unit there. And if you do one damage to it, you take control take of it. Drill. And there are things. And it's a card that comes in front of you. It, you're right, right. Likewise, if you move your unit moves to a place with the uh, a gate location, yeah. you can pay one mana right. or a certain number of ma two mana. Otherworldly. Yeah. So you get to a, a new dimension. Yeah. And again, do damage to that location, you take control of it. Right. And uh, reap the benefits yeah. of having that additional. So there's lots of things your units can do during yeah. this phase. It's really slick. I really like that that you could pull those different locations and add them basically to your player board for expanding your horizons, right. so to say. You know? Right, right. It's pretty slick. All right, lastly is the trade phase. And, and if you've set up an agreement or an arrangement mm -hmm. to be a, to trade with another kingdom, then you can trade one good, just a single good. Right, right. But you cannot, I don't know why you would, but you cannot trade the same good. Yeah, because they don't want you to exploit, you exploit the fact them. that <laughs> yeah, it's counting how many times you successfully trade a good. Yes, it And is. so they're trying to say, are you really are you trading? Really trading? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, because you get the the um, the favor tokens. Right, once you've completed five trades, five trades and the, the, uh, you put markers on the trade agreement, mm -hmm. so once you've traded, e traded different goods five right. times, uh, the trade agreement is fulfilled and right. you get the appropriate amount of favor for that. Exactly. All right, so how does the game end? Well, based on whatever season level you chose, either 10, 15, or 20, at the end of that last season, then you count up favor. Now, favor can be accrued throughout the game. There are various mm -hmm. things you can do, such as completing a trade agreement. We just talked about that. Once you've done that, both sides get three favor. Right. Okay, if you formed a military alliance with the winning side of a battle, you also get three favor yeah. if, if once they're successful. It's really a neat way to gang up on other people. It is, it is. <laughs> but you might find yourself remaining with the one person who's stronger than you. So right. be very that, careful yeah, about that. That's true. Now you can also get favor throughout the game. You get one favor if you betray a yeah. trade alliance or a military alliance. So you might say, I'm on your side and no, no I'm not. Uh, so <laughs> you get one favor. I don't know, there's maybe Loki loves that. Yeah, right, okay. yeah. Uh, if you're in a war and mm -hmm. you're the aggressor, you're the attacker, and right. you're successful, yes. you get eight victory points. It's huge. It's huge. Um, if and you but, are the defender mm -hmm. and the war timer runs out, uh, five turns, yep. uh, you get three victory yeah, points. Which is still nice. It's still nice. And so that's... Um, There's through, definitely, when you engage in war, you have to be prepared. You do. Because mm -hmm. if you don't win... And they're just going to get three favors. Yes. Yeah, so you've, what you've done is, although you may have damaged them, you've actually given them the yeah. the currency they need to win the game. Exactly. So those are ways you can accrue favor during the game. Now, at the end of the game, there mm -hmm. are additional ways you get right. favor. So for every territory you hold, every every territory beyond your home kingdom, on yep. these gray areas, you get an additional two favor. And then lastly, for every tile mm -hmm. you've upgraded you get one, one more favor. More, yep. So there are ways to win this game that are not aggressive. You right. can say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing a lot of exploring, I'm yeah. going to be improving my kingdom, and, I have, and I'm doing nice things with my neighbors by exchanging resources. Um, you might never actually go to war with anybody and still win the game. That's so right. be, be careful about that. If you're spending a lot of time fighting with your neighbor, that guy in the corner who's yeah, just kind of being a, quiet. Yeah, he might, he might, he might keep might, an eye on that guy. Exactly. So that's how the game ends. Count up favor, and that's the kingdom that openly survives at, um, due to the favor of the gods. All right, folks. Remember, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here is in prototype form. Even the rules still might be in flux. So keep an eye out on the campaign. But with that said, this is a big adventure game. It so is. It's a big 4X game. And it definitely, we played we played a, a single game over a couple different evenings. Yeah, yeah. It's so big. it's, you know, you can sit down and play for two to four hours, but there's just a lot going on here. And I really like the artwork. I like all the choices and decision making that's going on. Yeah, and I, I'm a big fan of worker placement. So yeah. this is a lot of fun. And there are a lot of things that feel tight because yeah. I, I want to upgrade so many things mm -hmm. and it's like I have to invest so much to move my population up. Right. I usually love getting lots of workers, but it's not easy to it's do. Not. You have to keep in mind you've got your workers to and invest the upkeep in. upkeep is Yeah, your workers, sometimes. your units, and yeah. your stability. There's so many things to keep track of. Yeah. So there's lots of vectors to, to pursue yeah. in this game. And uh, I think it, it just has that capacity to be like, a conversational remember when that happened yeah you yeah. know so 
Uh, it's definitely a game to keep an eye out for, and if it looks like something that might be of interest to you, I'm sure they would be, appreciate your support. Absolutely. So I think that's it from us, yep. and until next time, we'll, we'll see, see you at, at the, the table. table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.